I've been doing a lot of thinking about Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 and the rest of the game for that matter. What are we doing in the facility? Why did we come here? Who are we? And I think I finally solved it. So Slices, put on your aprons and let's bake ourselves a theory. Something about this game never sat right with me. If you look at the game as a whole, it's toys attacking humans. First there's Huggy Wuggy, the big blue thing that you see at every single $5 mall stand, and it presumably tries to eat you. But then we meet Poppy in Chapter 2. She seems way more friendly and way less hungry. Hungry. Same with the antagonist Mommy Longlegs. She's aggressive, sure, and she definitely seems to want to kill us, but it doesn't seem out of like pure hunger or violence like Huggy Wuggy did. And it's throughout this chapter that we get documents and VHS tapes that truly give us an insight as to what's actually happening with these toys. These toys were not always alive, but instead were infused with the minds and souls of children and sometimes even employees here. Now this all starts to add together. These creatures aren't driven by sheer hunger, they're angry at the their fate. They're angry at what they've become. They just want to go back to a normal life. And that's all well and good, but then Project Playtime comes out and flips the script. In the tutorial level, we directly hear from what is most likely the prototype, telling us that So there is some semblance of basic necessity here, and it seems like they don't get that from each other. Otherwise they would have just eaten each other and there'd be like one really big overfilled toy in the center of the factory. Luckily, they're all working together for their goal, right? Now do you see what I mean? Not only are the goals of these toys odd and hard to pin down, but their allegiances are too. They don't seem to get satiated at all by eating other toys. And if that's the case, why are they out killing other toys? What makes these toys different from each other? To make matters worse, the other experiments could tell 1199 was different. That could do it. We know that Playtime Co. was turning employees and children into toys. Maybe then the difference is whether that toy was originally a child or an employee. But if that's the case, we don't yet know which toys were employees. Hell, we barely even know any employees. But the ones we do know seem important. This isn't news to anyone who's looked into the lore of the games, but in the beginning of Chapter 2, we get this higher-ups hallway with five different slides. One for Elliot Ludwig, the founder and CEO of Playtime Co., and three other visible names. Names, the fourth one being destroyed. We have Eddie MNR, Leith Pierre, and Stella Graber. Seeing how the center slide is literally the CEO, and these names are given equal space, they all also have to be quite important. And last year, Game Theory had a pretty good dictation on who did what, because the slides come from an area with giant labeled doors, five in total. Five and five, it matches up pretty well. And one of those doors is Innovation, the very same part of the company that we know for a fact, Leith Pierre is the head head of. Using that information, they assumed that Eddie was the head of research, Stella was the head of play things like the play place and the game station, leaving the fifth slide for the head of production, that fifth pipe belonging to the player. They concluded their theory saying that the head of production was responsible for creating these monsters, or at least facilitating in the process of it. And I disagree with that and a few other things. Granted, this was a year ago, things have changed, but still. First, I disagree a little bit on where these placements are. I think the fact that Stella Graber's voice is the voice of the game station, and that all documentation from the game station goes through her, I think she's just the head of the game station, and everything with that, which would leave the play place actually for Elliot Ludwig. He kind of didn't get a door because his office leads to here, but regardless, he was always the like, toy, friendly, happy-go-lucky, I want to work for the children guy. So leading the play place makes a lot of sense for him. The other three, I feel like are definitely right. Obviously, Leith is head of innovation, we know that, but Eddie feels right for research. After all, he's the one communicating. I think that evidence holds up, which would then just leave production for us, the player. But I disagree on what our role as head of production was, because I don't think that quite adds up. I think there's a better explanation for what we did as head of production, why we're back, and what our name is. Let's start at the beginning, the letter that brings us here. At this point, most people speculate that the prototype, the puppeteer of all this, is the one who wrote it. What is also widely believed to be the ultimate fate of Elliot Ludwig, 
the CEO of Playtime Co. A metal claw-like hand that is incredibly intelligent, incredibly violent, and fiercely protective of children. But if this is true, it inherently raises three questions. Why did Elliot reach out to us specifically? Why didn't we disappear with the rest of the staff? And why did we listen and come back? I think the first two questions can be answered simultaneously. Traditionally, in the real world, the head of production is sort of an overseer role. Because remember kids, most higher-ups only supervise and don't do real work, CEOs being most guilty of all. Which is why unionizing and collective action is so important. Anyway, in the real world, the head of production oversees planning, coordination, and control of the manufacturing process. And often, they have a say or are in total control of product design. That's what I think is the key here, product design. I think our character designed a majority of the older toys. I think, like most companies, Playtime Co. started small, with maybe a few people. And one of those people was our character, the player. Our toy designs is one of the big factors as to why Playtime Co. skyrocketed in success. And to be clear, I don't think this is a Bendy and the Ink Machine situation. Elliot never seems jealous or anything. After all, it's his company that was skyrocketing. And the toys made children smile, and that seems to be all he cared about. But eventually... Elliot died, and the bigger body initiatives started really picking up in gear. Our character would have known about these experiments. They're one of the five slides of the higher ups, and had access to the overseeing of the game station. But I do not think our character would have liked them. I mean, it's their toys in the first place that are being turned into monsters. This goes against everything that we can presume our character would have believed in. These were our creation, and now some scientist is turning them into a bastardization of what it once was. What's worse, they're using children as the fuel. We had to leave. We couldn't take it anymore. That's why we weren't present when the bigger body's initiative failed. But I do think we had a hand in making sure that it did. After all, the Project Playtime tapes seem to be talking to us. You wonder who we are, but why? You should know. It was your doing that made us. I understand that this line makes us seem like we played a very big part in the Bigger Bodies initiative, but I disagree. If we were a big part of the Bigger Bodies initiative, why did we immediately change our mind and start working against it? But even more importantly, if we did change our mind, why in the hell would the toys trust us? We're the ones who did that to them. Wouldn't it make more sense if instead of being a part of the Bigger Bodies initiative, we were the ones who created the toys? That way, not only the toys, but specifically Elliot Ludwig, the prototype, would know that we are against this initiative through and through, and would be much more likely to trust us. We want this thing to stop, and that's why we came back. The reason we received the letter at the beginning is because Elliot Ludwig knows that we would be willing to come back and fix this. So then, who are we? A few people have taken a crack at it. Notably, again, Game Theory in that same video took two shots at it, offering up a name like Jay Bohemian, but more seriously considering the name Jamie B. Honey, a name pretty fitting for a toy factory executive. But I have a problem with these names as well. Look at the construction of these signs. Each sign is a board with several pegs and one letter attached to each peg. Every letter and dot has their own individual peg. They're centered when they can be, and when they can't be, they're off to one side. Now, look at our board. The letters fell, but the pegs are still there. 11 pegs to be precise. This is what I think the key is. 11 pegs, 11 letters. These letters are the only letters in our name, and all of the letters in our name. Even more importantly than the fact that there are 11, there's a row of five and a row of six pegs. So I think our first name is five letters and our second name is six letters. This immediately would knock out J. Bohemian. But I hear you, Jamie B. Honey, five, six, that works, but not quite. Two issues with that name. First off, they had to trade one of the A's for an E to make that name work. And second, B. I understand that B could work as an initial, but we see initials on these signs. And every time we see them, them, there's a dot following the initial. So there would have to be a dot following this B to keep the design consistent. And there is only six pegs. We would need a seventh peg for the dot after the B and we'd need a dot on the ground. We don't have either of those. So if those names aren't possible, we have to make our own. We've got the letters J A H Y E O I N B A M to work with and 11 spots to put them in. Now I'm going to go into my process and the names I've settled on, but I challenge you guys five and six, these letters specifically. See if you can come up with one in the comments below. I would love to see them. I tried this for a while and I got nowhere, but when rewatching the current teasers, I think I found a hint that might lead us in the right direction because there's one recurring phrase in them. 
The hour of joy is at hand. We don't know what that is. Frankly, we have no evidence pointing us in any direction of it. But of the letters we have available for the name of our character, J, O, and Y, are available. Furthermore, we have a last name that is six letters, meaning joy would fit perfectly in the beginning or end of that. So and so blank joy, or so and so joy blank. We would just have to fill in the remaining letters. And if the prototype thinks we are going to come back and help everything, that's what this teaser could mean. Us being here is the hour of joy, and it's at hand. So what about the first name? It took me a while, but I first settled on the name Iman Bajoy. Granted, it doesn't fit perfectly well. It feels somewhat out of place. Bajoy isn't a real last name. I can't find any examples of it besides the fact that it's nearly the same as Bajoy, a city in India. I hope I pronounced that right. Iman also is a real name, but it's not very common, and it's also in French-speaking African countries specifically. Now, why would that be an issue? It technically isn't, but looking at each other name of the higher-ups, all of them have at least one part of their name linking directly to Germanic roots. Ritterman, Leith, Ludwig, Graeber are all Germanically tied names. Their origins are from the Germanic language language. So part of me feels like our name has to have that connection. And frankly, that's where I ran out of ideas. I couldn't find a single Germanic rooted name with these letters. So I put a bounty out to Twitter and lo and behold, Maggie, shout out her two cats, Woody and Tigger, delivered, giving us two options. The first is more often and commonly used in Germany, Amina, but it's not of German origins. The second one, while more old and much more rare, does have Germanic roots. And I think that's perfect. The age of the name isn't too important because this would have been someone who was well later into their life in the 80s, so that's fine. This name being Mina? Mina? I'll say Mina. I don't know the correct pronunciation. Correct me below. This would leave three letters for our last name, B-A-H. So my final guess for the name of the player is Mina Bajoy. Notably, a feminine name. Our player might be a woman, actually. I know a lot of people have been assuming a man, but you know, girl boss. So Mina is called here by Elliot to right the wrongs of the past. So then, what is the actual actual issue currently happening? What is our goal in the present moment? Well, I truly think that the prototype is guiding us to destroy larger toys so that he can make himself stronger so that he can take on the bigger threats below. Now, I'm not the first one to suggest that the prototype is helping and guiding us. A lot of people have thought that. The get up, it makes sense. It, it seems pretty clear there. But the thing that keeps holding me up is that there are lives at stake here. Theoretically, there aren't. All there are is toys. If there are no humans left in the building, whose lives are at stake? Who is threatening the other toys? Well, I think it's the other higher ups. Huggy Wuggy is the key to understanding what's going on here. Because although they were creating sentient monsters, Monsters, they were also equally emphasizing obedience, Huggy Wuggy having maximum obedience. It does whatever it's told at all times if the right people tell it which is why the other monsters keep attacking and dissuading it. The other toys know this one is different, and this one is still working for the adults, the ex-employees of the facility. I think Eddie Ritterman, Stella Graber, and especially Leith Pierre are still in the building as huge, monstrous toys, trying to conduct more experiments and threatening what little life is still left in the factory. Elliot wants this to stop, but as smart as he is as the prototype, Type, he's just an arm and a hand. He needs you. He needs someone to come in there and destroy the toys one by one, bigger and bigger, so he can take their parts and make himself into something greater, to take on the other executives. A civil war is brewing in the Playtime Co. factory. Elliot Ludwig and Mina Bajoy versus the higher-ups. The children hang in the balance, and although it was bleak before, the hour of joy is at hand. But what do I know? Another teaser trailer for Chapter 3 is coming out like the day after Ruin, so that could probably prove this whole thing wrong. Speaking of Ruin, noon Tuesday the 25th, I will be doing a very long live stream where we will play all of Ruin and then we will do a bunch of lore digging, so be there, it'll be super fun. If you want to know what I think is going to happen in Ruin before then, go ahead and watch this video. In the meantime, a huge shout out to the best channel members, the Dough Risers, and until next time, as always, stay toasty slices.